Hi, I'm Paul Battaglia, and this is section 9.3, Geometric Sequences and Series. You know, we're always looking for a way to captivate our students' attention, and this time is no different. And what we're going to try and do here for you is show you a little bit of an activity that we work through with our students. I'm joined by Gabe and Brittany. And guys, a little earlier we had some fun um, working with uh, some materials, right, that you can use with your class. And let's kind of kind of go through it for the teachers and show them what they would want to do in their classroom. Okay. So you can see up here that we have a whiteboard that has been uh, marked with some lines. And then we have a bouncy ball. And what we did is we bounced this ball and tried to get it to bounce as many times as we could. In this particular instance, we have about eight data points. And what we would have students do in class is measure the height of each successive bounce. And then once they do that, we kind of lay all those, uh, all those data points out, and we're asking them to see if they notice any patterns, mm -hmm. right? Now, for you as a teacher, these materials might seem a little cumbersome. Um, you know, you might not have the space to do this kind of thing, it might be a little tricky. Um, I know, Brittany, you've done something similar in your class, right? Yep, um, so I've done this activity, but I've let my students take out their cell phones and okay. record the ball bouncing Perfect. because most of them have the slow motion, you right. know, setting on their camera. And then they can go back and they could pause it and they could see where the ball was, they could mark mm -hmm. it accurately. So that's an option as well. And Gabe, you actually do something different, right, if mm -hmm. you can't come uh, by these materials, right? Sure. So if you're teaching a larger class or you can't get your hands on these materials, you can almost illustrate the same thing just by using a piece of yarn or string. Okay. So what I like to do is I just take a relatively long piece of yarn right. and I'll take it folded in half, cut it in half, then I'll take one of the halves, cut that in half, so now you have a fourth of the total piece of right, yarn. Right. Take that, continue this process, cut right. that in half, cut one of those halves in half, and just do this however many times right. I really feel is necessary. Right. And I could do it as the teacher standing up in front of the classroom, or I can even pass the yarn and scissors around to the students sure. and have them cut it. And what we start to see is, well, if we look at the successive pieces, we have, well, one half the total length, mm -hmm. one quarter of right. the total length, one eighth. Then I start to say, well, what happens if we add all these pieces back together? What right, do we end up right, with? Right. Well, the initial the length piece, of the piece of yarn. Yeah, which, mm -hmm. is, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, Brittany, talk to us a little bit about, you know, Gabe gave us a great example there. And now what we want mm -hmm. students to do is, now they hopefully see that there is a difference yeah. an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence, right? Mm -hmm. What do you really want your students to, to see? I want my students to see that with the geometric sequence that we have this common ratio right. now instead okay. of this common difference that we have with the arithmetic sequence. Right, right, right. Um, but then I also want them to see that there's a lot of similarities. Sure. So we're just changing the formula around to accommodate for this common ratio mm. for the geometric series. So we can still find the partial sums. Mm. We can still find uh, just one of the points in the sequence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so all the stuff is still, uh, you know, it relates in some way, mm -hmm. shape or form. And I, I know, Gabe, you also have a way that you like to kind of pull it all together, mm -hmm. right? Talk to us a little bit about that. So when we're talking about geometric series, in particular these infinite geometric series, right. mm -hmm. students might come into this thinking, well, how can I add up infinitely many ter positive terms right. and get some finite number? Right, right. I know as a student I was sort of blown away when I realized this. Right. So the example that I like to use is similar to the piece of yarn that I was talking okay. about earlier, but maybe I'll draw a one by one square on the board. Okay. And I'll say, well, what happens if we shade in one half of the square? Okay. And so we'll shade in one half, and then I'll say, okay, well, let's look at this remaining one half that we haven't shaded. What happens if we shade in one half of this? Right. And all the while pointing out, well, first we shaded in one half, now we shaded in one fourth, fourth of the right total square. square. Okay. Then with the part that we haven't shaded, we'll shade in one half of that, which right. is one eighth of the original right. square. And I'll continue this on, maybe for a few minutes. As long as it's practical. And right? yeah, yeah, as long as I, <laughs> right. I have a little something to shade in. Right. And then from here we'll have a nice conversation about, well, what happens if I just keep going? Will right. I ever suddenly just jump outside of the square? Right. And I'll mm -hmm. say, and we'll get to maybe, and not really, right. it, it, right. it, it doesn't happen. Right. So mm -hmm. I'll share that with the students and say, but we keep getting closer and closer and closer to one, and actually mm -hmm. if we add up infinitely many of these areas, right. we get to one. And that's, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's where this conversation goes. And then from here, if you would like, you can even introduce the idea of Zeno's paradox to your students, right. because they get this notion of these geometric sequences and how they work. Right. I think it's, it's a great, Gabe just gave us a great illustration of how we can go from the pra you know, practical to the theoretical mm -hmm. and show students you know, the idea that, yeah, as we continue to introduce infinite amount of terms, so to speak, that sometimes we actually have this really neat, fascinating idea that we can sum them all up to mm -hmm. something. I hope these tips have been helpful for you and you find much success in section 9.3.